Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought I'd show you how to make this fun floral fantasy card. We're going to be making the one on the left, but at the end of the video I will tell you some more details about the one on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be stamping on the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this to size. I've placed it in my Tim Holtz tonic trimmer. And I'm going to be cutting this white panel 4 and 3 quarters by 4 and 3 quarters. And I'm going to be cutting two of those. So now that we have those all set, this is the stamp we're going to be using. And this is this beautiful uh, floral fantasy by my favorite things and there's the name there the floral fantasy background and I just think this is gorgeous and in order to use this you want to remove that white backing that's just protecting the sticky part on the back of the stamp so now I'm also going to remove the foam pad from my misty stamp positioner because this is a thick red rubber stamp and I'm going to position my paper on my misty I'm going to be using my mini glue tape from Tombow just to hold that in place while we do the stamping. Because this stamp is so large it's going to cover this entire panel. So now I'm using my VersaFine Claire ink and this is the Nocturne color. And then I'm going to position my stamp right down in this Misty. I'm going to close the lid and pick up that stamp. Now this uh, ink that I'm using is a permanent ink. And I'm going to make sure that I put plenty of it on here. Get a nice coverage, so I'm just patting it on all over. And if you do find that it doesn't stamp perfectly the first time, you can go ahead and stamp it again. And you do want to press this out really well. Just make sure you get a nice clear stamping. And you can see that beautiful jet black ink that we have there. So I'm going to clean everything up and I'm going to stamp my second panel. So I'm placing that paper back in my Misty using a little bit of glue tape underneath there just to hold it in place. And I'm using the VersaFine Claire Purple Delight this time, which is this beautiful purpley pink color. And again, I'm going to apply a nice even coverage of this. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp it again, applying a nice firm pressure here. And you'll see it didn't stamp perfectly clear here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp it again. So I'm just inking it up and I'm going to stamp that one more time. And now you can see how beautiful that color is. I just love that color. So now that those two panels are all set, what I'm going to do is take that one with the Nocturne ink on it. And I'm going to die cut this. And you can see that this die cuts a few different uh, shapes of these circles. One with the scallop and one with just that stitched edge. So this die set is the Jumbo Peekaboo Circle. And this is from my favorite things, the Dynamics Collection. And I'm going to center it on this panel. And the one that we're going to die cut is going to cut a stitched border on the frame and then just die cut the circle from the center. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to save that frame for later. So we're not going to be using that now, but I'll show you here up close. We're going to be using that circle, but you can see this frame has that beautiful stitched edge. So I'm going to save that for another card. So now I've got the, uh, the black panel and that purpley one. And you can see how that flower is going to line up right on the center of that panel we already stamped. So that's why you want to make sure you line it up in your misty, so that when you go to put these two back together, they're going to line up perfectly. So now using 653, 676, and N00, which is the blender, from my Tombow dual tip markers, I'm going to start coloring these in. And these are a water-based marker. And I'm going to start with my lightest color, and here I'm just checking the blender pen just to make sure that it's clean. 
So to clean off the color or to remove color, you can go to your scrap paper and just take some color off the blender pen. Or if you're changing colors, you want to clean it off on your scrap paper. And I'm really just applying the darkest color right along where those petals meet. Basically, there would be a shadow there. So I'm going to apply the lightest color, then a little bit of that darker color in there where those petals overlap. And then I'm just going to blend it out so that the uh, edges of the petals would be the lightest. And I just continued to do that all the way around here. So on this panel, I decided I would just use three colors, primarily uh, purple, orange, and green, to do all of my coloring. Now on this one here, you will see that I'm going to come in again a little bit later with another layer of that shadowing color. Sometimes with the Tombow markers and the blender pen, I find that the paper gets a little bit wet. So what I'm going to do is color these with these two layers of color first, and then I'm going to color come back in a little while. I'm going to let them air dry just a little bit while I work on that second flower there. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to add another layer of the shadowing. So I'm going to finish coloring this one here. And I did speed this up so that it wouldn't take up too much time. And then I'm going to do that second flower the exact same way. So now you certainly could just leave it like that, but you will see here, I'm going to come in now with that same color, and I'm just going to start to shadow right underneath those little petals. And you're going to see a big difference here when I do this. It's going to definitely bring this a little bit more to life. But as I said, you could have left it the way it was. But this only takes a few minutes here just to come in and just add a little bit more shadowing in here. And these types of stamps I find are so much fun just to stamp a whole bunch of these panels and then sit and color them in a variety of colors, kind of like the coloring books that are available now. I thought this one kind of reminded me of that. And just sit and color if you enjoy coloring. And then you have these panels ready to go and you can use them for anything you want, you know, to use them for a frame or the the cover on a card or whatever you like. So I think this is a fun way to do this. So now take 925 and 985, which is a yellow and an orange color. And I'm just going to start to color in some of these other little items in here. And I'm using that orange to do my shadowing. Cleaning off my blender pen there and then pulling that color up towards the top. Now you could use many different colors on this. So you may want to do a couple more with some different, different colors or add lots of color. Even a rainbow of colors would be really pretty. And then for this little section up top, I kind of treated it as though I treated the flowers, where I kind of just took each little section and then kind of put some darker color right down there at the base or where they kind of overlapped and pulled it out towards the edges, just to give it a little bit more dimension there. And then for these little tiny flowers, again, just putting a little bit of the darkest color in the center and then pulling it out. Now using 346 and 243, I'm going to be using the greens in order to do my leaves. And this one, I'm going to just put that darker color down towards the base of the leaf and pull it out towards the edges. And then this leaf, if you look at the bigger pattern, 
um, it actually is going the other direction. So the darker color would be on the opposite side. So I'm just going to pull that towards the center here. And then for these random areas in the middle, I decided to use the green. And I'm just going to kind of shadow just in some various areas here, just to give it a little bit more dimension. And here's where you can have some fun, where you want to add your shadowing, because it's really up to you here. And then using N95, which is a really light gray color, I'm just going to fill in some of those open areas. And I'm just going to pull that color in as well. I just thought it was a little too white, so I added the gray just to kind of fill that in a little bit. So now that panel looks pretty good. So now that's going to sit on top of this panel that we already stamped. And I'm going to be using the Elizabeth Craft Design Soft Finish Cardstock in the Lavender. This is a 100 pound weight. And this panel measures 5 by 5. And then I'm also, to make the card, I'm going to also use the Elizabeth Craft Design Soft Finish Cardstock in the White. And this is also a 100 pound cardstock. So for that white card, it's going to measure 5.5 by five and a half. So I have it, I have this paper cut at five and a half by 11 and I'm going to score it at five and a half. And then I'm going to fold this in half. And this is going to make a square card, which just keep in mind, this costs a little bit more to mail. The postage is a little bit higher. So I'm going to add some double stick tape all the way on the back of this panel and attach it to my card. And I'm just centering this on the white card. And then I'm going to attach this panel as well. And you can see that little circle is going to sit right in the center of this panel. Now for the circle, I'm going to go ahead and pop that up. And I'm using some Scotch photo mounting tape just to give that a little bit more dimension. And then I'm going to line this up exactly with that pattern underneath. So I want to make sure I take some time here to make sure it's perfectly positioned here. And then I'm going to press that down. Now I want to add a little sentiment to this card. So I'm going to use the sentiment that says, you make life colorful. And I've mounted it on an acrylic block. And I'm using the gumball greetings from my favorite things. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. Going back to my VersaFine Claire Purple Delight ink pad, I'm going to ink this up and stamp it on this white cardstock. Now from the Dynamics Blueprints die set, I'm going to take that banner here. And this is the Blueprints number 27. And I'm going to center this little die on my sentiment and I'm just going to tape it down with a little bit of washi tape. I'm running it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine and you'll see here that that die leaves a little bit of a stitch border along that one side. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this to my card again going back to my Scotch foam mounting tape. And I'm just removing the backing here and I'm going to place it down in the bottom left hand corner here. Now I still thought it was a little bit plain, so I'm going to add these little purple gems. And I'm using my Ranger Multimedia Mat to glue them down and my Mar Marvi Uchida Jewel Picker to place these down. And I will give you the information for those gems down at the bottom and for all of the products that I use today down at the bottom. So just check for that listing of supplies. And I'm just picking up the gems with this jewel picker. 
and gluing them in place. So that completes this card. And you can see how pretty that is. And we only had to color a small section of this large panel. Now I did want to show you on the second card that I did, I colored the entire panel. And you'll see that here. And I, d I stamped with the black ink, and then I colored with the exact same colors we used before. And then this ca card is a little bit smaller. It measures five by five. And that lavender panel measures four and three quarters by four and three quarters. So this is a little bit smaller card, but you can see the difference by coloring the entire panel and just a small section of it. So you have a lot of options with this stamp set. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.